What I'm going to do is to discuss five patterns of gastritis. They are all extremely uncommon. Acute erosive gastritis, on the other hand, is somewhat common, but very uncommonly biopsied. So when I look at a gastric biopsy like this under very low power, I'm looking, is it pink or is it blue? And it looks relatively pink. The next question is, is could this be helicobacter pylori gastritis? And since it lacks that blue band, I'm going to argue that it probably is not helicobacter pylori gastritis. When you look at this under a slightly higher power, perhaps there is a blue band right under the epithelium, but the epithelium itself looks busy. It looks more blue than it should look. Clearly, there are more cells in there than there normally should be. There are definitely more cells in there. Look at those little cells with halos around them. This, by the way, is gastric body fundic mucosa, and the rest of that mucosa looks quite okay. Clearly a significant increase in intraepithelial lymphocytes, which suggests a diagnosis of, wait for it, lymphocytic gastritis. Here are the intraepithelial lymphocytes. Classically, they have this halo around them, which is totally an artifact. If you think of it, all of pathology is an artifact that we introduce by formalin fixation and paraffin embedding. So, shouldn't come as a surprise. There's a couple of plasma cells down there, but there isn't that huge expansion of the lamina propria by lymphocytes and plasma cells that you see with helicobacter pylori gastritis. Next question. Yes, there's increased intraepithelial lymphocytes. This is very obvious, but how many are too many. The number banded about is 25 per 100 epithelial cells. Do I count? Probably not. If it hits me on the head like this, I'll probably call it. If I have to go hunt and get to 25 and I barely get to 25, I'm probably not going to call it lymphocytic gastritis. All right, once you make a diagnosis of lymphocytic esophagitis, remember, again, this is not a diagnosis. This is a pattern that we have learned to recognize. And the two most common conditions that drive this pattern are helicobacter pylori gastritis and celiac disease. So the first stain you'll do is a helicobacter pylori stain. The next slide you look at is the slide from the small bowel. And then it's everything else. And I will admit to you, these are the other associations are extremely uncommon. I've certainly seen a case of Olmosartnan induced lymphocytic gastritis. And although I've seen a lot of Crohn's disease, I have never seen Crohn's disease primarily present as lymphocytic gastritis. So in my book, truly, truly uncommon, the rest of these diseases. So how do you craft a report of lymphocytic gastritis? Well, if you have an underlying etiology, you identify helicobacter pylori gastritis, you call it helicobacter pylori gastritis. And if you have the time and you're academically inclined, you can refer to the intraepithelial lymphocytosis in a note. If, it, if you identify celiac disease, call it celiac disease. And for the gastric manifestations, say that there is an increase in intraepithelial lymphocyte and that this increase has been associated with the known celiac disease. Easy peasy. Let's look at this biopsy. As you can probably guess, there is an increase in intraepithelial lymphocytes. There is a lymphocytic gastritis pattern but that is not what hits you on the head. What hits you on the head is this diffuse expansion of lymphocytes and plasma cells involving the full thickness of the gastric antrum. This really is helicobacter pylori gastritis, until proven otherwise. And here's the lymphocytic gastritis pattern, the increase in intraepithelial lymphocytes. I'm not going to be able to show you the helicobacter pylori stain because I just couldn't get a good image from this case. But take it from me, this was H. pylori gastritis. And whether you mention the lymphocytic gastritis pattern of injury or not, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is this is helicobacter pylori gastritis. Oh, and then I had the CD3 stain on this case, and you can see that the majority, almost all of the intraepithelial lymphocytes are CD3 positive. Well, what do you do when you cannot identify the underlying etiology for lymphocytic gastritis? Here's what I do. So I'll say gastric antral mucosa with lymphocytic gastritis pattern injury. It's not a diagnosis. It's a pattern that we've learned to recognize. And then in a note, I'll say 
that this form of gastritis is most often associated with helicobacter pylori gastritis and celiac disease. I'll do my damnness to try and identify the underlying etiologic factor. And if indeed there is a helicobacter pylori stain, I'll say it's unlikely to be helicobacter pylori. If there's a duodenal biopsy, I'll say based on that duodenal biopsy, it's unlikely to be celiac disease. And only if I'm pushed really hard will I leave the rest of this note in because I personally believe that these are very uncommon associations of lymphocytic gastritis.